looking at warfare strategies. This is the month of Kislev. It is the darkest month. Uh, oftentimes, you're going to have attacks from the devil this month on you or on people that are connected to you that you are highly uh, in covenant relationship with. Now, trials are things that God allows the enemy in some ways to attack us. He doesn't bring the attack, but obviously, because God is sovereign, he will allow an attack from the enemy. And the scripture says that we need to count it all joy because the trying of our faith, the trying of our what? Faith will produce patience. Patience is a powerful fruit in your life. It's a fruit of the spirit. Patience is endurance. It's the ability to endure hardship or to endure tribulation. And everyone that is meeting their destiny in the Lord, who has a God-given call on their life, and we all do. Some of us choose it. Others do not choose it. But as you choose it, you, you're going to need to endure. Now listen, your earth walk uh, is, is not a sprint race, okay? It is a marathon. This is a long race. If you're a marathon runner, you know what I'm talking about. That's 26 miles that you have to run. Who knows that? All right? You've got to have the breath in your lungs to be able to make it to the finish line. Now, in this earth walk, as we look at this month of Kislev, as we may be being attacked because there's some dark things that may be coming against us, we have to keep that in mind. Lord, I'm going to endure to the end. Having done all, I'm going to stand in the what? Evil day. Jesus says that in this world you shall have tribulation. He, he, he made no bones about that, but he said, be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. Now, that's a very powerful statement. He said, you need to be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. So what that is saying is if you identify with Jesus... If your identity is in Christ, then who else will overcome the world? You will. With that in mind, we're going to look at the tribe of Benjamin tonight. Benjamin represents the month of Kislev. And uh, we see the, the child Benjamin uh, born in Genesis 35, 18. Rachel was about to die, but with her last breath, she named the baby Ben-Oni, which means son of my sorrow. The baby's father, however, called Benjamin, or Benjamin, which means son of my right hand. Now, at birth, Benjamin was, um, had to fight because mama died. If mama dies, the baby had to fight too, to get out. And I'm sure that all this was going on. It was very, very painful for Rachel to have to endure this. And so when her son was born and she saw her son, she actually wanted his name to be, for the rest of his life, son of my sorrow. Now, I want you to take that in for just a minute. Who in this house would stand up and say, I am the son of sorrow? Because your life, because every time you talk about your life, it's all about your what? Sorrow. And I, I want you to get that you're going to have a choice right now to make on earth. If you begin to identify with God, if you begin to say, Lord, I am your son. Yes, I am the son of natural parents, but you've extended me now because through Jesus Christ, I am also your son. When you begin to identify with Jesus Christ, you no longer are a son of sorrow. You become a what? A son of my right hand. God is saying to you, this is what God says to you. Now, you have to resonate with what God says. God is saying it, then you have to agree with it. If you don't agree with it, then it's not going to work. You get that. That's how it is with God. God believes a certain way. Now, do you believe the same way he believes? So, some of you already now are telling all the bad things that have ever happened to you in life. Well, you don't understand. You don't, you don't know what kind of life I've led. And so you get to the point where you actually identify with your sorrow. You cannot be a warrior in God's army if you continue to identify with the sorrows of your life. You have to step out of that and begin to truly believe 
You are the son of God's right hand. That would mean you're very close to God. That would mean that when you get in trouble, God's right hand is where? Right there to get you out. Who just got that? That is talking about the proximity that you are with the Lord. So how do you get there? You know how you get there? You get there by faith. It begins with you believing and by you confessing that you are the son of God's right hand. His hand is there to save you. His right hand has power to literally save you. If you're falling, if you're in a trial, because you are so close to the Lord, he can reach down and what? Pull you back up. But you have to believe that. You have to identify with that. That's the first strategy. You want to win the good fight of uh, faith? You want to win this battle that the devil's waging against you to steal your faith? The very first thing is who do you identify with? Do you identify with your carnal nature? Or do you identify with who you are in Jesus Christ? That you indeed are the son of who? God. And you are the son of God's what? Right? Son of my right hand. That's what he calls you. So as we look at Benjamin, a, a tribe came forth from this son of Jacob. Just like the personal Benjamin was the run of the litter. He was the youngest child. Jacob had 12 kids. You get the drift? And Benjamin was the runt. All right? So he was the littlest one who gets that. As years go by, he becomes a, a great nation. He becomes a, a, a great tribe. But the tribe is small. It's a small tribe. Uh, again, people are always wanting to have everything so big in their life. But you know what? The Lord will reduce you before he will add to you. He will actually reduce you before he multiplies. Because he wants all the glory in your life to go where? Back to him. So 1 Chronicles 12, 2 says, They were armed with bows and were able to shoot arrows or to sling stones, right-handed or left-handed. They were relatives of Saul from the what? Tribe of Benjamin. So as we look at this, these people knew how to fight. They were ambidextrous. When they would go into war, they could actually shoot an arrow and sling a stone with their right and their left hand. Now, shooting an arrow is very powerful because you want to shoot it. You have to have strength, that tension, and then you what? Release it, and it flies to the air, and it hits its target. Now, a rock, you have to throw it. It is said of the uh, Benjamites that they could throw a rock at a hair and, and hit it. Do you know how thin a hair is? I mean, they not only had force, but they had eyesight. They could see who gets it. And they knew how to target their enemy. And they were fierce. Now, in battle, a lot of times, in a spiritual battle, when you're under tremendous pressure, now, I have to say to you, as you mature in God, and as your uh, destiny becomes to, you know, becomes unfolding to you and you see and understand the gift that you are you see and understand uh, why God made you and you see and understand your purpose in the Lord the attacks can be very strong against you but that doesn't mean that you're not going to win it so what it gets tough on you if you're going to win does it matter who just got that See, you got to position yourself. Yeah, I know I'm going to go through some stuff. Yeah, I know the enemy is going to still try to steal my faith, try to steal my divine destiny, try to steal my assignment in God. But you know what? I'm going to stand and I'm going to have faith. I'm going to be able to target these devils that are coming against me. And though the battle may be fierce, I'm going to be still standing when the victory comes. That's the kind of mindset that you have to have. And so I say, you know what? The bigger they are, the what? 
the harder they fall. Now, when the Vegemites were in battle, they could shoot arrows, they could sling stones, but I tell you what, they could also defend themselves. Now, this month of Kislev has the letter, the Hebraic letter. It's, it looks like a round circle. It's the letter Semek in the Hebrew alphabet. And if you look at it, it looks very similar to a very small shield. And these shields in the Bible were called bucklers. And we know in Psalms 91 that God is said to be both our shield and our what? Buckler. Now, a shield was very large. A buckler was a smaller shield that would be put on your arms. You see what I'm saying? And so when the the arrows would come or the rocks would come, you'd be in battle and you'd be doing this number. You get it? Right and left. Now let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a spiritual battle where you were getting hit from right and left? It was so fierce. A thousand was falling you know, to your right hand and 10,000 was falling to your, your left. And who gets that? So sometimes battles are that fierce. That's why the Lord is saying to you, believe that God, your father, is your buckler. So who is doing the fighting? Are you doing the fighting? No, God is doing the fighting. He said, be still, and then you'll see the what? The glory of the Lord. He said the battle is the Lord's. So yes, we fight for our faith. That's our fight. We have to just maintain our faith in who? God, our father. Now, if you lose your faith in God during a battle, who's going to win? The enemy will win every time if you lose your what? Faith. But if you maintain your faith, God's going to fight your battle for you. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you really think you can come against the devil apart from faith? Devils will eat you up and spit you out. But they cannot do that to you when you have your faith. In your father God, because he created you. He says, do not be afraid. He says, trust in me. And he says, I will help you. And he goes on to say that I'm going to come against your enemies. Isn't it great that we have a God that says, I'm going to be an enemy to your enemy? A lot of times we think enemies are our natural human beings. Our enemy really is not flesh and blood. Our enemy is an unseen enemy. And that is why you really don't have the power in and of yourself apart from faith to fight that kind of stuff. But as you have faith in God and you trust the Lord, he becomes your shield. You, you say, Lord, you're my shield. I, I know things are coming against me. I know words are coming against me. I know circumstances are coming against me. I know that things are getting dark right now. But Lord, you're my shield. And Lord, you're also my what? You're my buckler. And Lord, when something comes against me, and I'll tell you what the weapon of the enemy is to you. And I'll tell you where it happens. It happens right here. You get it? It happens in your thought life. Your thought life is the spiritual realm around you. Your thoughts will make you in the Lord. Or the devil will use your thoughts to break you from the Lord. So as you begin to think, you have to be conscious of what you're thinking. And Jesus said that the devil was the father of all lies. So what kind of thoughts are going to come to you from the devil when you're under attack? They're going to be lies. He's going to give you, he's going to paint the worst picture he can paint. You're believing for a good outcome. Who gets it? But he's going to put every thought around you that says you're not going to have a good outcome. You're going to have a what? Terrible outcome. And these are thoughts. And, they're, and sometimes when it gets really, really tight, you'll even wake up in the middle of the night and have these thoughts on you. What do you do? You get up. And you begin to do uh, praise and worship. You begin to do battle to protect your faith. You begin to speak the word of God. Because every lie the devil says to you, does God have the truth 
to come against it. So we have to understand, number one, we got to identify that God is for us. He's not against us. He doesn't want us to be afraid. He will fight our battles for us. He will actually be an enemy to our enemy. He will actually oppose our enemies. And as we stand in the evil day, when the battle's over, we're going to look around, and where are your enemies going to be? They're not even going to be around you. They're going to be gone. And why are they going to be gone? Because the Lord in the spirit realm has released angels on your behalf to deal with those devils. But it depends on where you are in him and your faith. Can you do this? Can you do this? Yes, you can. Because in Christ, you can do what? All things. So Psalms 144, 5 and 6 says, Flash forth the lightning and scatter them, and out your arrows and rout them. So the Lord is saying that's how he moves. He, when, the, when darkness surrounds you, in the spirit realm, he's going to bring lightning bolts. And who do you think he's going to be hitting with those lightning bolts? Devils. Are demons dark? They don't want no lightning hitting them. And so the Spirit of the Lord is saying, flash forth the lightning and scatter them. When God arises through your faith in the atmosphere of your life, the devil's going to what? Scatter. Now, if the devil is coming against you very strongly, you, you have an assignment. The Lord's giving you an assignment. And, and uh, the devil knows that. And he's coming to steal that assignment from you. Uh, the devil can bring hordes with him. You know, he has an army too. And it's just not one or two devils. There can be several devils. So in the, in the spirit realm, they're, they're coming against you by using words in your thought life and pictures in your thought life. You understand that, right? And they're wanting you to get so weak that you'll start agreeing with what they're saying. Devils want you to agree with them. Because when you start agreeing with them, who wins? Now, does God want you to agree with him? Yes. All right, so who are we to agree with? Always God. Now, Jesus said, a house divided cannot stand. If you are disagreeing with what God is saying about your situation and agreeing with the devil, is your house going to be able to stand? No, you'll fall. Jesus says that if you'll remember my words, that when the storm comes in your life, you'll be standing on the rock. He didn't say if the storm comes. What did he say? When, when the storm comes. So you have to be very familiar with what God thinks about you, what the word of God says about you. And you have to get to the point where when the devil is coming against you with lies in your thought life, don't think the word toward him. Speak the word toward him. Learn how to take God's word and use it like a bow and arrow. Remember now, the Benjaminites were great archers. Think of the word, you know, the scripture says the sword of the spirit is the word of the Lord. Let me tell you something. Why is it called the sword of the spirit? Because the devil needs his head cut off. Now, how long do battles last? How long can natural battles last? Well, I'm not talking about wars now. I've never known of a battle to last a, a year. I've known of wars to last a year, but how about battles? Do you know the difference between a war and a battle? Battles can last a day or they can last what? A week, two weeks. But the issue is, at the, will the battle eventually end? And will there be a winning side? So you have to, as long as the battle is going on, you've got to stand. And having done what? All to stand. And while you're standing, you're speaking out of your mouth. And what are you speaking? The word of God. Every lie that's coming, you shoot back an arrow that speaks the truth. Now, can you do that? 
You have to learn how to speak God's word because that is a weapon of warfare. Flash forth the lightning and scatter them. Send out your arrows and rout them. I want the devil routed. How about you? When the devil's coming on you strongly, coming into your thought life, and there's a horde of them around in the spirit realm, you want them routed. You know what to rout a devil means? They're going to run in every, every which way. They're going to be like this in the beginning, but then what's going to happen? Bam. And you're going to feel it. There's always a breakthrough. When you're going through an intense battle, you stand strong and you don't give up. You speak the word and you will see something begin to shift in your atmosphere. And that's when you know the devils have been routed in your life. Psalm 45, 5, your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The people fall under you. Again, God is saying, use my arrows. The devil has fiery darts that the shield of faith quenches. But God has flaming arrows. He's got flaming arrows that will target the king's enemies. That means the devil. That means every demon that is coming against you, speaking against you, lying against you, telling you that you'll never make it, telling you that you're worthless, telling you you don't have a future in God, telling you that God really doesn't love you, telling you you'll never make it in this Christian life, you'll never be a disciple of Jesus, you'll never meet your divine assignment, whatever he's saying. You take the word of God and it becomes a flaming arrow into the enemies of the king's heart. And you know what? Jesus is our king. And there are some enemies coming against you and you're the heart of his heart. And he wants those enemies on your behalf to be dealt with. You do your part by speaking the word and God will do his part by pulverizing scattering and bringing you into victory every time under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness is a shield and a buckler again his truth his uh, faithfulness uh, his truth that's the word of God you need those shields you need that shield you need that buckler so when the enemy comes forth with his fiery darts you're you're able to speak the word, because it is the word that is most important, because it is the sword of the spirit. T let me tell you, why does it say it's the sword of the spirit? Because where are the devils? They're in the spirit realm. Are devil spirits? You need to know God's word, and you need to believe in God's word. You need to literally understand prophetically that when you begin to speak it, it's, a, it's an error. Ephesians 6, 16. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The devil's going to come. Those arrows are lies. They're tormenting. And sometimes those arrows are pictures, images, and they're tormenting. At that point, when that begins to happen, you are to raise up your shield of what? Faith. Because that's what the devil's after. He's after your faith. You begin to say, no, God is for me. He's not against me. And then you just begin to speak the word. You speak the word. You speak the word. You speak the word. And you know what? You, you, you may be in a battle for two weeks. But I'll tell you one thing. You'll never have to be in a battle for two, two weeks if you've never been in a battle for, for one day. Who understands that? Yeah. If you can win the battle in one day, then you're ready for what? The next battle. Now, unfortunately, many Christians can't even win the battle for one day. And by that, I mean they actually allow the devil's lies to overcome them. But is God going to give up on you? No, he'll give you a second chance. You might say, well, I don't want a second chance. Well, if you don't want a second chance, that just simply means that 
You don't want your faith strengthened. You don't want trials and tribulations that will cause you to have the virtue of patience that, that will come forth, that will cause you to be able to be a mighty man and woman of God. Romans 16, 20 says, The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Is that so powerful? Who's going to crush Satan? Are you going to crush him? No. Who's going to crush him? And, and the scripture says, it's important you see that it says it's the God of peace. Because when you're in a battle, the enemy is coming to steal your faith through fear and anxiety. He wants to take his horrible vacuum cleaner and back up all your peace. But as you begin to stand, you don't waver. You learn how to speak the word of God over your situation. Use it as an arrow into the, the enemy, the God of peace, and you want peace. You'll feel it you'll actually begin to feel the peace of God just come all over you. The, the God of peace will what? Crush Satan under whose feet? Under my feet. How many of you like that? In other words, what the scripture is saying is you win. You've actually been able to win because you've made God your protector, your security. You trusted in God. And you believed and you stood fast. And God will come around and actually put the devil under your feet. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Are you ready? Are you ready to win? Who wants a victory? Well, maybe some of you are saying, well, I've never had a victory. That's not good news. You got to start in the little to go to the much. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.